Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Amplify with Adam. Today we have Ryan Quinn here from Digipart. Uh, Ryan, man, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. Well, Ryan, why don't you give us a little introduction uh, to both yourself and, and Digipart? Yeah, so um, Digipart was started in 2019. Um, so we're still very, very new. We're kind of coming out of what would traditionally be the startup phase, kind of going mm -hmm. into ramping into development for um, you know, scaling this, this thing up. Um, my background is in mechanical engineering. I was in automation design, worked at a bunch of different companies in the local area for uh, automation. So we designed everything from um, assembly stations where you're putting together different components to full on ro robotic automation cells, um, all kinds of different things, mainly automotive. The area I'm in is heavily automotive. Yeah. And yeah, my starting way back, um, right out of high school, I, I went to Clemson uh, for mechanical engineering. I got super interested in the manufacturing side. So I actually went to a local tech school and um, started to take a machining class. It was just nice. super interesting to me. Um, like during college or, or post yeah. Cool. Yeah, during my, my stay at Clemson. And I got just incredibly hooked on it. It was very interesting just to take you know, a piece of raw material and turn it into something. I mean, I've been around manufacturing, but I definitely hadn't been involved at that level. So right. it was just very interesting to me. So I took some classes and I ended up loving it so much. I ended up staying and getting a full degree. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Then I went to work in the, the tool and mold industry and, you know, kind of made my way back in engineering. Um, so yeah, the last 10 years or so, it's been, you know, a lot of, a lot of projects, you know, a thousand something projects. And the issue I always had as an engineer was getting parts. They'd mm -hmm. either be late or they'd be wrong. We'd have to remake them. A couple of companies that I worked for, we actually had a shop on site. Um, so we were able to make some parts there. But overall, I tried all kinds of different sources and just never never really had any luck. Um, so the last job that I had, I was in charge of a major tier one automotive plant. And I started using a ton of 3D printing parts just to try to eliminate the whole machine shop thing. Like, yeah, please, like, got to get my parts. So I started changing designs for additive manufacturing um, and worked really well. It was my first real uh, venture into 3D printing, but I couldn't really get anybody else on board. So there was other engineers that were designing overseas that were conflicting with what we were doing. So I kind of decided I was going to go buy my own printer and I'll just make my own parts. Look, let's just streamline this whole thing. I'll design at a, my at a assemblies. Tier one automotive facility. Yeah. Too, you, know what I mean? like, yeah. Like, you know what? I'm yeah. doing this myself. Yeah. The, uh, they have other facilities that had them, at, you know, trying to negotiate that with a big company was very difficult. So yeah. I started looking into buying my own printer. Um, in, in those talks, I met uh, a, a, another guy that had, uh, he actually has a label printing company. And we decided, you know, to have lunch one day, we got to talking and found out we both had the same idea. Like, there's got to be a better way to get parts. Um, his background was mechanical as well. Long story short, 2019, I left my job and started Digipart. Originally, we were going to be a 3D printing company. And what we found was it was very hard to find other guys like myself that were ready to jump ship. Yeah. Um, not enough to make a business out of at the scale that we wanted. You could maybe, you know, have a nice little operation, but we had bigger, bigger sites than that. So we kind of went back to the drawing board and said, how can we, you know, fix this issue of getting parts fast and getting them right? So I knew about the CNC machining. I'd, I'd been a programmer for a while. So let's look at CNCs. Let's see if there's a way to do this differently, get things done faster, more accurate. So we spent about six months looking into that. Um, thought there was some potential there. So in early 2019, we launched the company, um, hired a programmer to help me out. And um, yeah, that was the start of that. So that's awesome. So, uh, yeah, you know, it sounds like you have uh, some fantastic and like rich experience on the customer side, right? And uh, and yes. obviously experience uh, on the fulfillment side. So, how how are you guys doing things differently? Like, what what lessons are you bringing from the customer side that allows you to do <clears throat> differently for you guys? Yeah. So for me, I was in an interesting position because I was always either a multiple role as an engineer. It wasn't just a lot of engineers just design and then they hand it off to a purchasing department or something and they have to go find the parts. Right. But on pretty much everywhere I was at, I had to do everything. I had to procure the parts, maybe make design changes if the price was too much. 
So I really got to know well what that looks like, what you need to actually make, you know, anybody can design. Yeah, exactly. Anybody can make a machine, but to make it in budget is a whole nother Mm -hmm. problem. So we've thought about our business model from the customer shoes intently from the very beginning and everything we do. So every decision that we make is driven from the customer's perspective, not what we want or what we want to do, what we can do. Um, and that's where we found our success is just putting ourselves in the customer's shoes. And not everybody can do that. I mean, you kind of have to know what the customer wants. And being, yeah. I just, I've been very lucky that my professional career set me up very well to be in this position. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the most important thing in, now, in having success in the industry. You're giving a lot of like design for manufacturability feedback. Like you're like, hey, man, you know, <clears throat> we can do this, but it's going to be better if you do X, Y, and Z, right? Yeah. Is that, is that what you mean by being in the customer shoes? Yeah, yeah. That's definitely one element of it. Um, I mean, from the very beginning, from when they come to our website to when they check out to receive their parts. I mean, we, mm-hmm. we try to think about, how does the customer feel about what's happening at this point in time with whatever it is? If it's an email they get, what does the customer think about the email they just got? If you think about it from that perspective, it really changes the way you think and operate as a company. Um, It's not a novel concept, but it's incredibly hard to do. It's why most companies struggle with that. They get very inundated with process and, you know, SOPs and it it just Mm kind of gets lost in the mix. But, I've been adamant from the very beginning that that's how we're going to focus is, you know, being customer minded um, and, to, you know, with their parts for sure. I mean, we'll have customers that maybe it's their first design or they have an idea for a invention and they really don't know much about manufacturing. So we try to facilitate as much, not, you know, not just give them a quote, we're trying to, you know, help them get a project or a business off the ground or, you know, get a machine up and running. Like there's more than just that part they need. But again, it all comes back to what does a customer want? What, and sometimes, most of the time, they don't know what they want. I'm going to tell you. You kind of yeah. have to listen and figure that out on your own. Absolutely. And so uh, it sounds like, uh, are you still, so you have the programmer, your business partner, yourself, have you guys <clears throat> scaled up? Because if not, it sounds like you're a lean, mean operation that's also doing kind of a, a, a lot of back and forth with the customer. So you know, are you implementing any uh, like automation in your shop or, or yeah. something of like that nature? Yeah, we were, we're very heavily auto- automated. So I wish we could do more, but you know, being a startup, there's just a limited runway that we have to deal with. And we're kind of at that point where the runway is stopped shrinking, but it's not yeah. growing. You know, that transition point where you go, okay, I think we figured it out. Now we got to, you know, tweak everything and make it work for the long term. So yep. That's that was the hardest part. The first two years of just figuring our way out through the business. We started in commodities. You know, uh, I need a bracket. I don't care anything about the bracket. I just need a bracket. And then now we're in the higher tier aerospace. We're beginning to do more Department of Defense work. Um, really, anything that can set us apart and establish a name in the market. So somebody needs a part fast. They're not just worried about a part. They need quality with it. That's kind of where we're trying yeah. to stand out. So. So we're still a small shop, but we're kind of in that mode of, of scaling up. That happened at the end of last year where we kind of met and said, I think, we've, I think we know what we're doing now. We know where we're mm-hmm. going. We've got different pieces of the puzzle in place. Let's go. Let's start scaling up. So obviously we're trying to hire people. And um, I'm sure as anybody in manufacturing knows, that's incredibly difficult to do yes. right now. Yes, it is. So that's Actually, really our- an article recently where it said uh, there's, the the most manufacturing jobs uh un you know uh, unfulfilled right now uh since the great depression i mean it is a it is a it's true insane. pain point in our industry yeah it is it's very difficult um you know my being a, a in background i learned about this in trade school um i hear a lot of people talk about trade schools being the answer and i, I was really very disappointed at, at at what is being taught in the trade school it's so heavily old school for lack of better terms. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with learning how to run a manual mill, right. but what I need is, is guys that are technology adapt that they can, they don't just know Microsoft Excel, they know VB script, you know, mm-hmm. they're, I need those kind of people and trade schools really fall short in that category. 
you know, just yeah. being a good machinist is great, but it's not going to be great in 20 years when it's not about the guy at the machine. It's about the machine and the automation behind it. Yeah. It almost feels like there's two routes uh, that people are taking is, is one, the applicant is going to like the school of YouTube right now, right? Like they're, yeah. they're learning on the internet yeah. and kind of on their own. And then folks show up with 60% of the skills and then it's on the shop to get them trained up with that last 40%, you know? Yeah. And, and that feels like that's the puzzle piece, which can be difficult for you guys. It puts a lot on you all for training. It does. And we've kind of just, uh, we've just gonna said that's just how it's going to be. I mean, we've yeah. just gone, full board we're going to go find good people and we're going to train them how we want to do things that's awesome and yeah it's incredibly difficult but it's it's just it, not only is it like the right thing to do for the way the industry is going mm -hmm. but it, we don't have a choice right now i mean it, like you said it's just very hard to find guys that are willing to you know jump ship from a good company and you know come to a, a relatively new company for, yeah. it makes it even harder but yeah so um yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of different ways to take it, but you know that that's what we've decided to go with. With the so when you look at aspect. it, it sounds like you know obviously uh, growing your your the people side of your business is important, right? But when you look at kind of uh, as you're rounding it, I mean, I say rounding into we're almost halfway through 2021, which feels like it's yeah. it's crazy. But <laughs> uh, but as we're you know getting through 2021 and and you're looking through the future, you know what are some other things you were talking about automation? Is there anything? specifically that kind of draws your eye that you're looking forward to as far as like adding technology or processes to your part yeah to your shop. yeah we're always looking for that i mean we have i mean i'm a young young guy i've had the benefit of having a partner who's very open-minded as well mm -hmm. so we can think out of the box of just about anything we want to do um, I mean, we have a facial recognition system that does our locks on the, on the building. I mean, anytime I can find a way to put some technology in a piece of automation in place, we're going to do it. I was so, about to ask about your, you know, ITAR compliance and it, it sounds yeah. like you've got, you've got yeah. some, some real compliance going on. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 We're working through CMMC right now, which anybody that's yeah. in government knows about that. Um, so there's some challenging aspects to that, but I mean, I, I, we've been doing a lot of those things forever just because we're a new company. We didn't have right. any, I mean, we have, why not go ahead and start with, you know, a gov cloud? I mean, why not? So right. we were, we were very lucky in that aspect. We kind of knew it was coming. We jumped on board with that a while ago. Um, we're also a small company, so it's easier for us to mm -hmm. move around very quickly and, and change direction with things. So. I mean, it, there's just so many pieces of automation that we're looking forward to. Um, you know, w we do exclusively small batch. We mm -hmm. don't do production stuff. You know, I don't have anything that runs more than maybe three days, maybe. Um, that's kind of a, what we do. So it's hard to find automation in there, right. um, especially on the machine side. So most of our automation is uh, on the front end, how we're processing orders, how we're quoting orders, communicating with customers. Um, we do have a lot of automation in the shop. I mean, there's simple things like, you know, tool probes in yeah. the machine. I was about to um, ask about the inspection side, you know, like CMMs, things like that. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're streamlining our entire inspection system um, just because we're, we don't really need a quality department per se with multiple people because mm -hmm. we're doing one or two parts. Um, so most of this stuff is happening at the machine. So we really need a different kind of quality system. So we're actually looking at a couple of different options right now. Um, but, but most likely we're going to be going with a blue light, um, mm. which is just a different type of laser to help us with the refractive, you know, shiny parts. But um, we're, we're kind of debating that. We use SolidWorks for our, our CAD here. And so there's some really great plugins and tie-ins for the quality systems in there. Yeah. Um, we're just trying to make sure that all the pieces of the puzzle fit. I mean, there really is no turnkey system, unfortunately. It'd be great if there was like, hey, I need to inspect parts. You know, give me a whole system. But mm. it's, it's a lot of puzzle pieces. So we're still valuing. We just came up with the next business idea, right? So like after you're done with DigiParts, we're going yeah. to do turnkey yeah. inspection there. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I, I've got too many business ideas right now. <laughs> <laughs> got to focus on one. <laughs> yeah, so... so that's a big one for us is the, the CMM, um, you know, something that's automated. I mean, mm -hmm. um, that kind of goes into my, one of the points I wanted to talk about was 
uh, PMI and model-based definition is, is mm-hmm. really something that is you know, gonna, it's going to be the future of manufacturing. It's difficult to say that it's happening right now. I don't have too many customers that embrace it, but we embrace it yeah. as much as we can. So that flows right into the inspection and it just streamlines everything for us. Um, that's all happening this year. And that's, that's the wave of the future. I mean, you know, drawing paper drawings will be, won't, you won't find one yeah. unless it's, unless it's, you know, a hundred year old government print or something, right. uh, they, they won't be around much longer. Yeah, no, that it does feel like that is a, a trend that's happening. So you're, you're a little, uh, uh, fresh into the, the digi part, right? So that we're, we're two years, two plus years. Um, but one thing I always ask is, uh, you know, obviously you've, you've figured out a formula that's, that's working and, and can potentially grow as well. You know, what's something, uh, but there had to be lessons along that way. Right. So, so what's something that you would have talked to 2019 Ryan and said, Hey man, think about this yeah. or someone that's, that's interested in getting into the space. Just, Hey, if you're, if you're thinking about starting, you know, X, Y, and Z are super important. Like what's a couple pieces of advice you'd give? Yeah. I, I think every entrepreneur has that moment when they look back and go, man, if I knew what I know now. Right. Yeah. And you either do that after a business fails or you have the opportunity to realize that before you're out of runway. And we just were in that position. I mean, so much of starting a business, I wouldn't say it's luck, but it's timing, you know, or did yeah. you do it at the right time? Did, did you make the decisions at the right time? And you could have a great business idea, execute it perfectly, but just have some timing off. And mm-hmm. that's all it was. So I, it's really hard to say like what the secret formula is. And, you know, could we copy and paste this to another shop? Yeah. Because it, it's just a thousand things that we, we did. I would say the biggest thing was, was, was learning what we want to do. Like, knowing without a doubt what we want to do not we're not just yeah having i mean a niche is kind of a a bad term because it's not like well we just make aluminum parts right but you know getting very specific about what you want to offer the customer um if you have a clarity in that it really helps develop your business strategy Mm -hmm. and know how you're going to market yourself how you're going to price yourself i mean if you're selling ferraris and you're you know trying to sell them in you know, the middle of Alaska or something, you're probably not going to do well. So knowing your market really helps be able to develop that strategy. And to do that, you really just have to know what you're going to sell. Yeah, we didn't so, know that at the beginning. It's just you know, trial and error. You know, we tried to sell commodity parts. We tried to sell all kinds of different things. And it was just try, 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 try. And then so you find the, one that kind of picks up steam. Yeah, it's the clarity of, of what you want to sell. And the kind of like I liked what you were talking about earlier is always thinking about the voice of the customer, right? And if you have that clarity and you have that voice, you know what you need to communicate and when and where to that customer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it all starts there. And, you know, it's just time. Um, You know, there's a few businesses out there that just take off on day one that's very rare. You know, it's just set in for the long road. I mean, just figure it out. You just kind of have to keep trying. Um, You know, there's in, in aviation, there's this idea that you if something goes wrong, you don't just quit and give up and go, Oh, the plane's going out. You try everything. You, mm-hmm. you just do whatever you can. You, you know, just pull every button, every lever, do everything you can to keep the thing afloat. And that, that's really it. I mean, it's once you find one, just cause that's working, like just keep trying, keep going, keep trying things. And yeah. Um, I mean, that, that's really what we've done. And I mean, it, it's, we're still kind of in that whirlwind of figuring out what we've done. Yeah. Like, we have a good idea of how to move forward, but now it's kind of like, all right, let's, let's break out the whiteboard. Let's write some ideas down. What has worked? What hasn't worked? And you'll have so many that along the way that you have to kind of pick one and go with it. And that's that's mm-hmm. where we're at. We, we found that out about middle of last year where, where our niche was and what we were really good at. And we just stuck with that. And that means turning some big opportunities away here and there. But yeah, that's, sometimes that's the right decision. That's and that's such a tough call too, you know. So it is. But that's an exciting time that you guys are at, right? Like there, there's a lot of a lot of variables flying around and and trying to figure out, you know, the exact ingredients for for what's going to be the, the success for the future is. Uh, that, that's a lot of fun, man. That, that's an energetic time for a company. So it is. Yeah, the last uh, really this year has been the the most fun I've had in business yet. I mean, just feeling like we have figured it out, like all those late nights of, you know, sitting around spitballing ideas, trying to come up with something. And now we, we feel like we've got it. 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so much fun when you get there and we're still not, you know, by no means are we done. I mean, right. there's a long way to go before we're, you know, an established player that can kind of, I don't want to say coast, you're never going to be coasting, but when you can kind of take your, mm-hmm. take a little breather, we're not there yet, but we have, you know, we got some breath in us now. So it's an that's exciting cool. time. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and Ryan, I, I've loved hearing your story and, and also like, you know, cannot wait to check in again in the future on, on what's happening with DigiPart as you, as you, you know, kind of, um, like you said, reach the next stages uh, in your all's evolution. Cause it, it sounds exciting and, and I'm going to love keeping up with it, man. Absolutely. Love to check back in. We've got another company that'll be, be launching. It's soft launch now. So I'd love to discuss that in the future once it's, it's ready to go. Yeah, man. When you're ready, I'm ready. So we'll, uh, we'll schedule that. That'll be awesome. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, Ryan, thanks again for, for joining us and, and everybody tune in next week for another episode of Amplified Battle. Adam, thanks. Take care.